Hello and welcome to another video. It's live here again. This is probably the fourth run on this because my audio has uh, not been working in the other videos. So thanks to the people that let me know they couldn't hear me. Uh, this time round, hopefully we should be good and you can hear me loud and clear. So the topic here is based on a very common question that's received in the, uh, the Odin Project Discord and just in passing and discussing people who are learning web development. And it's the challenge of choosing which tech stack you want to pursue. And I think this is an important consideration within the Odin project, but also regardless of how you're learning. Uh, and please let me know if the sound is working good, whoever just signed on here, and uh, that will give me some confidence that you can actually hear me. Um, so yeah, it's a very common question. Should I do Ruby, Rails, JavaScript, Node? I think off the bat, I'm just going to say it really doesn't matter which uh, route you take, which tech stack that you choose. If you choose one of the common tech stacks, whether it's um, you know outside the Odin project, whether you're doing PHP, Python, um, Java, whatever, uh, and within the Odin project, if you want to do Ruby or JavaScript, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I think any of them is great. The most important thing is that you stick to whatever you choose and you see it through to a, a decent level of mastery because then you understand the fundamentals of web development. And those fundamentals are going to be the same no matter what language and framework you then choose to work in or get hired in. If you understand those fundamentals, you will be able to pick up another language and tech stack far simpler than if you try to chase the shiny object and what's popular right now. Uh, so I think off the bat, just choose one and stick to it and that will help you accelerate and advance far quicker than you would if you were trying to chase the shiniest thing. You might spend a little bit of time in Python and Django, and then you realize you read a blog over here, actually JavaScript knows better. Oh no, but PHP and, and you know, WordPress, there's tons of work in that. And then you get pulled over to Ruby and Red. You can see where I'm going here. You will never become a master because you're always jumping, chopping and changing. Specific to the Odin project, oh, but before I get into that, one more thing is, I think there's a lot of people out there that are making clickbait titles that just want views with uh, opinions on different tech stacks. I would take their advice for the pinch of salt, unless it's uh, someone that has been in the space that you know that you can trust as good information. I think a lot of people are just regurgitating something else that they've heard said somewhere else. And I think you could place far more value on someone who's lived the experience and sharing their experiences than someone who just wants to grow likes and views. So with respect to the Odin project, um, once you've done foundations where you learn HTML and CSS, you'll still learn a sprinkle of JavaScript uh, at an introductory level. You can then choose whether or not you're going to do Ruby, Rails, or JavaScript and Node. Whichever one you choose is going to be a great choice. Let me just say that off the bat. But there are some other considerations you might want to make um, in making that choice. If you take the Ruby and the Rails path, it will take you a little bit longer to complete because there is more material. It also doesn't mean that you won't touch JavaScript because when you do Ruby and Rails path, you get introduced to Ruby, the language itself, learning about the language, and building some stuff in that language, just pure Ruby. Then you get introduced to Rails and you learn about the Rails framework, at least the foundational uh, elements of the framework, and you're able to use it to build some pretty simple web apps, right? That's great. Then after that, you still go into JavaScript and learn about object-oriented programming in JavaScript uh, and learning about you know ES6, more modern um, sprinkles of uh, awesomeness in JavaScript. So it's not like you don't get to touch JavaScript if you take the Ruby path. The one thing you might not choose to do is Node, Node.js, but you can still do that if you really want to. So if you take the Ruby and Rails path, it will take you a bit longer, but you still get exposure to JavaScript. And I think you get the benefit of working with a purely object-oriented programming language like Ruby, because JavaScript isn't, um, though you can do object-oriented programming in JavaScript. But if you know Ruby, you can also then switch to other um, similar languages uh, like Python, and, and that's exactly what I did. I didn't touch a lick of Python, but my first job was in Python, and that helped. Uh, the reason I got that job was because I understand, I understood how to work in Ruby. 
uh, which is very similar. And I think that that um, the Ruby and Rails path is also a very good path to take if you are interested in Ruby and Rails itself as an ecosystem. Now you can look out there and you will see tons of headlines, blogs, videos of people saying Ruby's dead, Rails is dead, don't touch Ruby, don't touch Rails. I think that's all just, I won't swear, but it's just a whole load of crap. It's it may not be, well, it's certainly not the most popular framework out there. It isn't, the numbers speak for themselves. But is it dying? Definitely not dying. Uh, there's some really big companies built on the Rails framework, you know, whether it's Airbnb, Shopify, you know, all, all the other big ones that you can find pretty quickly online. It's a very robust uh, framework. The Ruby language, it's very nice to work with, I, I think. I really enjoy working in Ruby itself. It's very clean, simple, easy to understand, um, and pretty easy to pick up as well. Um, there's people that complain about the compile, uh, compiling speed of Ruby. It's not as fast as other lower level languages, for example, but that doesn't matter. Unless you're you know, building stuff for NASA where you need the quickest comp compiling possible. On a web app, it really doesn't matter if you know your request takes an extra 100 milliseconds to, to come through. It really doesn't matter for, uh, for web applications. So I think Ruby is a great language. Rails is a great framework. Now, if you want to work in that, that's great. Ruby and Rails is generally geared towards smaller companies. There are big companies out there that use it. But the thing that makes Rails mm, so desirable is that it allows you to get product to market quickly because the rails framework takes a lot of the boilerplate code and the heavy lifting of certain web protocols web development um, processes out of your out of your uh, interest you don't have to bother with those things they're done behind the scenes and it leaves you to build the actual features that make your product the product and add the value to the end user it's very um, dynamic. It allows you to move quickly, build quickly, prototype quickly, change um, change course, pivot, build new features, whatever it needs to be. It's great for the startup ecosystem for that reason. And it's one of the reasons why Rails is um, very startup or small company heavy. Now, if, if that is something that you like the sound of working for a smaller company, fewer employees, you know, you might, uh, you might like the sound of that, get perhaps more autonomy less siloed, less bureaucracy, all those kinds of things, then Ruby and Rails, I think, is a great framework if you want to work within that environment. Though there are big companies also using it. So if you like the corporate side of things, you know, Airbnb, um, Shopify, uh, Gusto, other, other big companies that use it, certainly um, you could try and apply and get a job in one of those as well. Um, when it comes to JavaScript and Node, I think if you're going to be a full stack developer, you need to know JavaScript anyway. There's no way around that. Uh, the thing you want to choose is your backend language, whether or not it's going to be Ruby, JavaScript, or something else. Um, the one thing that people do harp on about is the popularity of Node and JavaScript. Now, I haven't done the JavaScript part, so I can't speak too much about it. I've looked over my wife's shoulder as she's done uh, up to the Node. Um, path, so I understand what's going on there. I didn't learn JavaScript through the Odin project. I learned it on the job in my uh, uh, internship at FreshBooks through the context of a front-end framework. So I haven't done much like pure JavaScript programming and object-oriented programming in JavaScript, but I don't. That's fine by me because I understand how to do it in Ruby. I don't think it'd be a stretch to do it in JavaScript. And anyway, most places don't code in vanilla JavaScript. They use front-end frameworks. So um, I think it's OK to just, if you don't know a framework, pick it up wherever you go. The thing is, you just need to understand the fundamentals of JavaScript. And this just harps back to what I was talking about in the beginning. As long as you understand the fundamentals of programming, you can pick it up in another language. And because I understood the fundamentals in Ruby, I could easily pick it up in JavaScript. I could easily pick it up in Python, right? And I did that both in my internship. Um, however, JavaScript Node is very popular. A lot of, uh, if you, there was the Stack um, Stack Overflow survey, developer survey that just came out recently, like the last month, the results came out. You look in there, the number of people using JavaScript and Node, it blows Ruby and Rails out the water. 
Um, so it's very popular. And look at the job postings in your area, in your country, where you are looking to apply to. Uh, it, it's probably better to choose a language and framework that is in use in the area that you want to apply to. I don't think it's a deal breaker because it certainly wasn't for me, but it will probably give you more chances, right? Because the reason I got hired on as a Ruby and a Rails developer is because I understood Ruby and Rails. I, I, I have experience working in it. They didn't hire me because I knew JavaScript and Python. So it certainly helps to know the language and the framework that you want to focus in. Uh, but that the, the key thing is there is I wanted to focus in Ruby and Rails, so I pursued that path. If you really want to focus in JavaScript and Node, pursue that path. Don't do it just because it's you know the most popular thing or it's what everyone is telling you to do. I think you've got to ask yourself, what do you want to do? And that might, um, there might be some criteria there that I can't really speak to, but if you want something that's going to um, give you a job at the end of it, then maybe looking locally is, is where you want to go. But I, I honestly don't think it's a deal breaker. Um, one of the key things that I learned from going to FreshBooks is it doesn't matter what, what you study really, because as long as you understand the fundamentals, you will be good. Um, there is a caveat to that, though. You need to do something that helps you stand out from the other people around you. And I, this is what I've spoken to in many of my other videos. Uh, the Odin Project is great with some great projects. But if everybody out there is learning JavaScript and Node.js, how on earth are you going to stand out from that crowd? Uh, and that's one of the reasons that took me to Ruby and Rails. I rather specialize in a niche technology than the one that everybody is doing. Uh, I think there's power in niche. I studied the Ruby and the Rails market. And, this, and I, what I learned was that there is, it's very hard to get into as a junior. It is, they, they really want to hire mid and senior level developers. But at the same time, it's an ecosystem that is very hungry for talent and skill. So therefore, if you have that skill and understanding in that framework, you're more likely to get a job. And it's probably the same in JavaScript and Node. I know that many companies, many tech stacks are hiring mid-level and senior, and there are very few positions in junior. And at the same time, you have far more competition in the junior space. So bear that in mind when you do choose a tech stack, what does your competition look like? How many people out there are going to be applying on this job? You might have junior level JavaScript Node.js jobs with a thousand applicants on there. Whereas comparatively, you might have a mid-range Rails developer job with 50 or 100. I don't know the numbers, but you can see where I'm going here. It might be slightly easier to stand out in the less popular tech stack. And it worked for me because I find I landed a job. And I know it's very hard to land a job right now, though I know other people in Ruby and Rails right now who are finding it hard. So I think the second differentiator here is how do you make yourself look different to your competition? And that comes across in multiple ways. I think first is networking, and second is the projects that you build. So again, I've said this many times, and it's not related to the topic of this video, but build something with real world users, and you will stand out. And again, I don't think which tech stack you choose matters here. If you build a fantastic little app that has real world users, and it's in Ruby Rails, Python, Django, uh, JavaScript, and Node.js, I don't care. The fact is, is that you understood how to build it and take a real world problem and solve it in a, uh, with code. That's going to look far more impressive than you know the tech stack that's listed on your resume and some smaller projects that everybody else has built. So I think that's going to give you a leg up. I can't speak to other tech stacks because I didn't apply to other tech stacks. I only applied to Ruby and Rails positions. Um, but that said, my first job was in Python. Uh, and JavaScript, and I had no Python experience. The fact is, is that the, the person doing the hiring uh, saw my passion and the projects that I built in Ruby and thought, okay, this person is passionate, understands the fundamentals, and is probably going to be a good bet. Um, I don't know if there's any, uh, there's a couple of people watching, if you have any questions on this. Um, this video is getting, gone on a little longer than I'd intended. And hopefully I wasn't rambling too much, but any questions, 
If not, I will wrap up there and uh, bid you guys a good evening. And thanks for tuning in.